Hey, Chris and Tricia here. How are Hi. you doing, everybody? Welcome into our home. Yes. What's Welcome. going on outside? Why aren't we outside? Because it's cold outside. Well, you say it's cold inside. <laughs> it is cold inside also. <laughs> well, that's, a, that's an electric bill situation with us. But it's just raining and misty all the time out there, so I guess we're going to have to finish up our Tabernacle Series indoors. Mm -hmm. And it is getting later in the fall, so... Yes. Uh, we're on the table of showbread. I hope you've enjoyed this. Keep going back through. Uh, we're moving today from the outer court into the inner court. Remember in the outer court, we come through the gate. Judah is on the east side. That means praise. We enter his gates with thanksgiving into his courts with praise. Then we come to the brazen altar, burning with fire, a symbolism of the Holy Spirit and uh, the fire of the Holy Ghost, the fire of hot gospel preaching. And then we came to the laver, well, what's interesting about the laver, watch this. If you put the gate here, the, uh, the brazen altar here, the Ark of the Covenant here, lampstand here, and table of showbread over there, then you, looking down from above, you've got what? A cross. It's got a cross. So when God looks down at the tabernacle, he sees the cross. That's very interesting because, you know, he's not looking for our our uh, preaching abilities. He's not looking for our ministries, our programs. He wants to see the cross in the midst of his people. The cross is the center of everything. Just as the brazen altar is the center of the outer, outer court, the cross is the center of the entire tabernacle. But now watch this. Gate, brazen altar, mercy seat, lampstand, and uh, table of showbread. But the laver is off just a little bit from center here. Uh, I read that from one of the uh, he, Jewish priests that is just off center just a little bit as you go into the inner court. Well, why would that be? Because it was the sight of Jesus that was pierced and water and blood ran forth. And that's a symbolism of the cleansing power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And the reason we go to the laver is we wash because we're about to enter into the inner court. And the first piece of furniture that we're going to see is the table. You see the table there? Mm -hmm. And we're going to look at this piece of furniture. And after we get done with this, we will move to the lampstand or the menorah. And then we will go to the golden altar as the third piece of furniture in the inner court. Now that's very interesting. The <clears throat> inner court symbolizes the church age. Uh, two things I want to show you there. We may not even get to that table today. You're all <laughs> okay. ready to read. That's all right. Uh, but you can learn this too. Mm -hmm. The uh, gate was five cubits by 20, but it's low. It's 100 cubits. But the inner court is 10 cubits high and 10 cubits wide. Now notice this. We come in the outer courts five cubits high. Now we move into the inner court. It is 10 cubits high. Now that may not mean much just on the surface, but what I get as you go deeper with God things start getting higher. <clears throat> you know, the outer court, the gate has four posts on it. I call them Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So the outer court gives us the simplicity of the gospels. But the inner court has five pillars covered with uh, gold. Now those five would be, watch this. Are you watching? I'm watching. Yes. Five is the number of grace. Okay. But five is also the number of the fivefold ministry. <laughs> and we have apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. So now we're moving from the simplicity of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John into the complexity of the uh, apostolic ministry. And notice this, in the epistles were written by Paul, by Peter, by James, by Jude, and by John. So five pillars, I think, speak of the epistles. So we're moving now from the gospels to the epistles. The Gospels are low and simple. The Epistles are tall and more complex. And as you become a, a student of God's Word, as you move from faith to faith and from glory to glory, then things start getting more complex. Are you excited about complexity? I'm complexed. <laughs> <laughs> She's complexed by it all. And if you don't understand any of my uh, complexing stuff or perplexing stuff, then, uh, so anyway... Uh, so the outer court, we go through the gate. The inner court is called the door. And then the veil to the Holy of Holies is called the veil. So we're going from gate to door to veil. Jesus is the gate of the sheep. Jesus is the door of the sheep. Jesus is the veil into the Holy of Holies. 
And uh, just as there is a table of showbread, lampstand, an altar of incense, the showbread, the bread, symbolizes Jesus, the bread of life. The lampstand has the oil in the lamps, which is a type of the Holy Spirit. The altar of incense, incense rising before the Father is prayer and praise. So you have the Son, you have the Holy Spirit, and you have the Father in the inner court. Now in the outer court of the law, there was no revelation, no clear revelation of a divine trinity. But the moment that we step into the inner court, we find God in three persons, blessed trinity. And that's a beautiful thing. <clears throat> now, we're not going to get to the table today. Okay. <laughs> did, you, did you know that was going to happen? Sure. Probably with me. Okay. God is how many persons? Uh, God is, three per is one God eternally existing in three persons, mm -hmm. namely, this is a, a theological statement, namely the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the Old Testament, out in the outer court of the law, in Deuteronomy 6 and 4, it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. So in the Old Testament, they only had a concept of one true God. And in the New Testament, we find that one true God is revealed in three separate persons or personalities, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But even under the law, Deuteronomy 6 and 4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord... Our God is one Lord. Notice that. The Lord, our God, is one Lord. And so you have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit there in that statement without them even recognizing it. But when you get into the inner court, then the divine trinity becomes very apparent. Praise the Lord. I don't know if we taught them anything today. <laughs> I'm I sure hope we did. I'm I sure hope, you did. I hope we did. <laughs> yes. Uh, anyway, the divine trinity and the inner court as I said, is 10 cubits high, 10 cubits wide, and it is 20 cubits deep. Now, a cubit is the length of the forearm. So it's uh, 10 cubits is 15 feet by 15 feet by 20 uh, cubits would be about 35 feet. This is interesting because 10 times 10 equals, now I'm putting you on the spot with mathematics. 100. 10 times 10 <laughs> equals 100. Could we get an amen, a like, and a thumbs up? There you go. <laughs> for Tricia right there. She, she, she's always wondered if she's just a prop over here. She's not. She's an important part of it because she's my math student. Now, 100 cubits by 20 deep, 100 times 20. Now, this is really complexing. 100 times 20 mm -hmm. equals what? Yes, you, you, you got it. <laughs> she got that one too. 2,000. So this inner court, the volume of it is 2,000 cubits. That's not uh, coincidental. It's because I believe that from the entrance to that inner court to the veil that leads into the Holy of Holies is 2,000 cubits. Now what's that mean? 2,000 years from the uh, death of Jesus to the coming of Jesus again. We don't know the day, but we know the data. We don't know the second of his coming, but we know the seasons of his coming. And if Jesus died in 33, 34 AD, then we understand that we are getting very, very close to the end of the present church age as we know it. And it's in this dispensation, this time frame of the inner court, the sanctuary, the church age, the day of the spirit, when the bread of the table, we're serving the bread of the word of God, the oil and the lampstand, we are witnessing full of the Holy Spirit, letting our light shine to a lost world, and the incense that's rising before God, symbolizing the prayer and the intercession and the ministry of praise that's going on in this 2,000 year age of grace before the veil opens and carries us into the final room, the Holy of Holies. And the Holy of Holies is 10 cubits by 10 cubits by 10 cubits deep. That is 100 times 10, 1,000 cubits. And we read four or five times in Revelation chapter 20 of a 1,000 year millennium. The kingdom of God on this earth with the Ark of the Covenant and the mercy seat and the glory that fills that thousand cubit room. One of these days soon, the glory of the Lord will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea in Habakkuk 2 and verse 14. But first we have to move from law, outer court, into grace, the inner court, and then the veil will open and we'll 
be ushered in at the coming of the Lord into the final thousand years, the millennial reign of Christ. We used to sing a song that said, the sin and sorrow, pain and death of this dark world shall cease in a glorious reign with Jesus of a thousand years of peace. Oh, my soul is groaning, crying for that day. One day is with the Lord is a thousand years. That day of sweet release when our blessed Lord comes back to earth again. Praise the Lord. Well, we're ready tomorrow and you're going to, Get right there. You got it marked? It's She's going to read first thing on tomorrow's program. Make Pray sure God. you're back. Yes. Like, and we'll see you then.